What are you guys doing here? Where have you guys been? I've been waiting around for you guys to help out with this wing, get this wing done. Now, hey guys, it's Adam back here in the AeroWorks workshop. Back at it on the right wing here and uh, pretty much got all of the uh, holes drilled out, got most everything deburred. We did have a little mix up on the root rib. Um, these are the two that surround the fuel tank and there's a left and a right for both the left and right wing and I flip flop two of those ribs. Long story short, I'll show you that here in a second. Um, I used the root rib that didn't have the holes for the uh, flapperons, the flapperon bracket. So I have a rib on there that has no holes for the flapperon bracket. I talked to Roger, I said, what, would you, what do you recommend? Should I take the entire rib off, deburr it, drill it out, or should I just drill holes in the one that doesn't have holes? He said that shouldn't really make a difference. Go ahead and drill the holes, just make sure you get everything lined up. So I was able to use the angle bracket and the bracket itself and basically get it jigged up just where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill those holes out and we're gonna get these flapper on back brackets installed. So thanks for joining back. Sorry we've been gone so long and uh, hopefully we're gonna get back at it more frequently and let's get these wings done. All right guys, so I've got the bracket lined up here. I've got a couple clamps I've got one clamp here, a couple Clecos half installed because obviously there's no holes there, but it is allowing me to kind of jig this up. So once I get two more holes drilled all the way through, we'll, have, we'll be able to have this Cleco permanently. Uh, I am going to go right for the, uh, the A5 rivet size because I don't want to wobble a hole out any. So we're going to go ahead and uh, drill that through right now. Go ahead and get a Cleco put in there and that should hold that in place just right. Now we don't really care if that other one pops out. We'll get one more in there. We should be good. Notice I'm using the air drill too, the Sioux Tools drill, air drill because uh, they spin up really fast. So there's no walking around with things. So basically now I can take this clamp off. This uh, is not going to go anywhere. And all I have to do is repeat the process here, get all these drilled up, and then we have a drilled out rib, just like the factory one. All right, now we can take this, uh, the Clecos out and deburr our holes. Actually, I'm gonna have to pull this off to get that angle bracket off so I can get those holes drilled. We wanna get that bracket out of the way. All right, so we got the angle drill out to accomplish getting these holes drilled here since we have tight clearances. So we're gonna go ahead and get this down here. All right, so we got the holes drilled. We'll get that bracket off, deburred up. We'll clean up that area and uh, we'll keep moving on. Now, as you guys may or may not know, it's always a good idea to have the rivet head pulled from the thinner side. So in this case, our, our rib here on the wing is thinner than the bracket. So we're gonna be pulling and installing the rivets on the thinner rib side provides a little bit more strength. Now again, this isn't always possible due to uh, you know where a part or piece is, but in this case we can do that. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on this part. We'll get these Clecos out and continue on. Now you might find it easier um, to pull these four bottom angle bracket rivets using a hand squeezer. In fact, you almost have to. Um, there's just not really enough room to get the uh, rivet gun or the pneumatic one in there. You know, you'd think that in this day of CAD design and everything that 
some of these things would be thought of as you're designing the airplane, you know, have room for tools and places to get, you know, your rivets into, but you know, it is what it is. We can, we'll make it work. Um, you know, some things are a tight fit sometimes and you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. So that's what we're doing. If you're just joining in on this episode, we've got a whole bunch of other episodes, including one on tools specifically. So if you're just getting started with your build, um, you want to know what tools you're going to need. This is a hand rivet squeezer. We also use uh, a pneumatic one as well, and those are all covered in that video. Take these last two Clecos out and get those last two rivets in. All right, guys, now here's one of those instances where you want to put the rivet in from the thinner side into the thicker side. But in this case, we've got a rivet that's popping up from the bottom here that's holding our skin on to this rib. Um, and so therefore, when I put this rivet in here and try and get my hand squeezer in, it's essentially getting blocked by that rivet down below. Now, moving forward on the next wing, you could always leave that rivet out until you get these done and then put that rivet in. Or in this case, we'll just switch it to the other side and we'll pull it from that side. Not a big deal on one. Again, it's a preference to try and go through the thinner side first, but in some cases that's not possible. And one rivet going from the opposite direction, is not gonna make a big deal. So there we go. Everything's riveted up. You need to repeat this step about five more times and then we will have all of the flapper on brackets installed. All right, guys, you can see we've got this all riveted up. Rivet it up. And rivet it up, and we're moving on down the line. Now, a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, one, you can see here I also scotch brighted that a little bit. I had a couple little hairline scratches just from using the tool. Probably would be, would be a good idea to wrap uh, your hand tool with uh, masking tape or something. If you do ever make a scratch, in the aluminum, it's always a good idea to buff those out. You don't want hairline scratches, which can promote um, cracking and other things like that. So uh, that also leads me to this guy. We see, and you've seen me use this quite a bit in the videos on some parts where I was putting two parts together that will eventually be painted maybe inside the cabin, things like that. I've also seen a lot of guys priming this entire rib area with a product like this. Uh, know that this provides really no corrosion protection. A lot of us like to think that if we paint it green and it looks like a real airplane and it's gonna be corrosion protected, but this is really an etching primer which opens up the metal, not only aluminum, but steel and every other kind of metal to paint adhering to it. So in the sense that yes, it has some rust prevention, which aluminum really doesn't rust, it corrodes, um, on a steel part, yes, this would help with a little bit of rust prevention, but the primary purpose, no pun intended, primer, primary purpose for this particular product here is again to open up the pores essentially of, this, of the metal to allow the final paint product to adhere to it. So if you're not going to be painting these ribs, you're just going to be priming them, you're really doing nothing for them. They have built-in corrosion protection on them. Now, if you want to use something like the Cortec, which is what the factory uses on all their factory built parts, that's a water-soluble corrosion protection on you know areas where you can't get to. They do that at the factory. You could do that with all your parts here. Uh, you could also use something like um, the, the poisonous one that they don't even really sell anymore that they use on a uh, uh, full-size and uh, commercial aircraft. Um, you know, but the, the point is, you'll see it even in the, the Zenith videos that these wings get put together just like I'm doing it here. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, if you live in Florida on the beach, if you live in California and you're gonna have salt water spray, you're building a float plane, something of that nature, sure, you're gonna get that added protection from, um, you know, doing a anti-corrosion type uh, protection on there. This plane, however, will always be hangered. It will not be in salt water spray. If I go into the ocean, it's going to be because I'm going down into the ocean, not because I'm landing in the ocean on floats or anything. So that's my preference. Do what you guys want, but just know that 
all you're really doing is adding cost and weight when you're just spraying all these pieces to make them look green. So if you're putting two pieces together that you're going to paint, by all means do it, but know that uh, that is all that that's used for. This last root rib here, this is kind of the decorative rib that goes on here. You'll notice that it comes factory drilled with a couple large holes. Those holes are intended for these first two bolts here and here to be removed and this be bolted in as such. On the rear side, you'll notice I left out the last three rivet holes. That will match up to these three rivet holes and that will be fit in there as such. And this is where we get that fairing from wing to uh, fuselage. That's really the purpose of this one, although it does obviously add some strength there. This is not so much of a structural piece as it is a, a fairing attach point for the bottom skin and top skin to make up this distance right here. This is, of course, structural, and the spar on is structural. Um, and of course, every piece adds to the aircraft structure, but just know that this piece here is really just for the fairing to go on. And uh, we'll be doing that later in the wing build here uh, before we do the final skins. Now the final top skins, they stop here. And actually this piece from here to here shares the same rivet point. So you actually leave these rivets out until you're ready to do this portion here. You're gonna need this area for wires and things like that anyway. This is where you're, uh, you may have some, uh, you could have your pedo hoses, you could have wires in here. A lot of that will also be back here in that trailing V. A lot of, you'll see a lot of guys running stuff along here. You may also have some come out here, or here, or here. So you wanna keep this area accessible because it is kind of the last point for you to be able to get into your tanks, things like that, um, to finish up things. Uh, one of the final things we'll be doing before we start reskinning the top is, of course, corking everything. This cork gets applied to all, oh, and I just broke a piece there, nice dry cork. Uh, this gets applied to all these uh, rib angles here, all the way around, front and back, and also three strips along the bottom. And that gives your uh, fuel tank a nice tight fit, keeps vibration to a minimum, and kind of locks that all into this bay right here. So we'll be doing that at the very end. Once we're for sure done with all any drilling or sanding or anything like that, we don't want any dust to be on here. We'll clean that up, wipe it down with acetone and then stick not a broken piece, but a good piece on there and uh, finish this wing up. All right, guys, well, thanks for joining in again. I'm gonna get back to work, so I'm gonna put the camera down. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in, watching the videos. If you like, Give it a like down below, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't seen the previous 50 something videos, check those out too. We started from our original pickup of the kit or delivery of the kit, unpacking and so on, all the trials and tribulations of building a kit aircraft for the first time. Again, it's Adam with AeroWorks and we'll see you on the next video.